Good evening and welcome to Uncommon Conversations on Signature Television. Of course, we are reaching you from our studios in Enugu, the cool city state. Before, during, and after 2023 electioneering campaigns, Dr. Barista Pitamba, then candidate and now governor of Enugu State, made a robust statement. He boldly stated that he would take Enugu economy from $4 billion to $30 billion. That was a tall order. Many doubted him. Many are still doubting him. The belief is not possible. But events in the past one year and two months may prove the naysayers wrong or we prove the believers right. Apart from expected huge financial inflow from foreign capitals and investments, Inugu State is expected to make a quantum leap in revenue generation. And that's why the position of the executive chairman of the Inter Internal Revenue Board is important. Before now, Somebody was appointed, and for reasons unclear to this presenter, he was replaced with our guest this afternoon. Our guest is Emmanuel Ekene Okema. Na Namani. <laughs> Namani, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to Signature Television. Thank you. And importantly, it's on common conversations. Yes, this evening we're going to have the quite on common conversations around the job you do, around who the man is, and um, the functions of your office, the challenges you are facing, and the hurdles you've crossed, and the accomplishments you've made. So I'm going to ask, start by asking you first, um, maybe just tell me why you think you are qualified for this job your background which is important really yes <laughs> it's very important this one if, is if a, a journalist it's, and you, a, it's a real interview <laughs> if you're a journalist and i'm dumped okay. into the revenue board maybe i'll be lost all right that's uh, your background uh, anyway uh, i'm a fellow of the institute of chartered accountants of nigeria so what it means that uh, I'm an accounting prof professional and also a tax professional. I'm also a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. So I've had over uh, two decades experience in internal control and uh, also banking experience. So I came from uh, one of the big four bank in Nigeria. So uh, I don't know if i must sell myself more more than this no i i, I think you're right <laughs> uh but um i asked the question because i wanted our viewers to have an idea of the man that emmanuel ekelenda man is uh, coming from a rich accounting and taxation background yes that means uh, for all intents and purposes you have to qualified for the job you are doing because mm -hmm. part of the challenges we have in nigeria is recruitment process yes sometimes you put square pegs in round holes uh, round holes in square pegs and so you come um, really qualified now one question that might be very uncommon is by the time you took over as executive chairman do you have an idea of what was the monthly revenue for the state at then and between then and now what has happened all right um you know the the two scenarios may not be the same and the environment may not be the same it's still a new state <laughs> our territory has not, has not changed it may not be <laughs> it may be a new state no <laughs> doubt uh, but a ton of events have actually shown that the environment are no longer the same the the orientation of the people are no longer the same the exposure of the people to tax matters are no longer the same and again, the, the willingness of government to, to sustain revenue for the state may not be the same. So uh, it may not be too good begin to compare what has happened. But uh, 
for the purpose of um, uh, this conversation. Yes, I for those <laughs> who, who are actually watching you. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, before we came in, the state has actually been doing well. So we made an average revenue of 2.4 billion naira a month. And uh, you know, when we say 2.3 billion a month, the state, uh, it was actually a tall order for the state to say, we can pay our salaries from our um, revenue. Bearing in mind that some of this revenue generation uh, actually go back to the people that generate it, like self-sustaining institutions. So, but um, when we came on board, we had new targets. We, we, we had some order that we can, directive that we cannot say no. Okay. So, some of these directives are that, you see this payment, you see this payment, if you see this payment, if we don't generate it, nobody pays it. So, in order to sustain the state in terms of those um, routine uh, OPEX, so we have to uh, begin to map out what are the areas we have potentials that we have not been able to tap from. What are those areas that requires uh, widening the net? Even when we know that uh, we are restricted in terms of uh, the provisions of the tax law, uh, because most of the tax laws are actually f law of the Federation, which we cannot come back to the state and say we want to amend or increase. So uh, we said, OK, how do we let our people know that are supposed to pay these tax. So we started with campaign. We started by letting them know that everybody has to contribute towards uh, the building of our state. So we started ensuring that the payees come as when do ensuring that our people are meant to know that they are supposed to file, make remittances and file. So we also touched our land use law, and our land use um, uh, computations, ensuring that uh, it's not just about what the law says, but uh, our, the ability of our people to pay, uh, considering the, the level of uh, our economic um, uh, level. So we reduce the, the, the land use charge uh, computations to ensure that uh, it's affordable to our people and that uh, we can easily collect. Uh, we also activated some of our uh, dormant tax uh, uh, laws, so, such as the, the purchase tax, uh, such as the, poor, the capital gain tax. Uh, again, we dare to enter where everybody has advised, do not go there, you won't make anything, the informal sector. Okay. So we delved into informal sector taxes, uh, which uh, people may not know that that is actually the mainstay of our economy, because uh, an average Igbo man is a trader, and these traders over the years uh, had not paid their tax into the government coffer. So uh, yes, we engaged them series of meetings, series of. Uh, I don't agree, you agree, you must agree, we must not agree. So after several engagements, and um, we agreed to work with the, the informal sector. And the informal sector is, a, is, is such a whole, a whole um, activity whereby every single aspect of the informal sector is represented by a union. And this union have level one, level two, level three union. And uh, when you begin to engage them on level one, level two, level three, you begin to see the hurdles involved in engaging them. So, but um, we were able to agree and uh, we entered the informal sector introducing a very simple technology we call the e-ticket. And uh, that's, that's, that's just the change we've seen. And um, and so this quantum leap. So, so what, what has this yielded in terms of revenue monthly now? 
Uh, yes, um, you know, revenue, Just being conservative. revenue generation <laughs> uh, has actually been um, up and down. It's not something that is yeah, average. Uh, uh, on average, we can, uh, as at last month, we can tell you that we are making an average of 5 billion. So that's a quantum leap yes. from 2.3 to 2.4 <laughs> to 5 billion. Yeah, it's actually a quantum leap. average of 5 billion as at last, last month. And yes, but my brother, can I? Yes, sir. A lot of people may not share these sentiments about the consultations. You, you know, I'm a media guy. Yeah. And um, the way you just said them, you look so effortless. Like, you know, you had consultations and people agreed. That's not the feeling out there. Uh, yes. That's not the feeling out there. Of course. But we'll get to that <laughs> a, 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 as we proceed. You know, I, because you know, when you say you engage in campaigns. You know, I told you <laughs> that uh, in the informal sector, <laughs> you have levels of union. Yes. There is no, 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 no person that will, even you as a media consultant, will not come to tell me that if I want to engage the people at Obete, mm -hmm. that I'll tell everybody at Obete to close that shop and come to the social hall. Yes. The question is, which, where is the hall? Where is that hall that will contain everybody in Obete? Unless you don't want to discuss, Obete has a leader. And this leader is represented by line, by line, by line. And when you engage them, you have actually engaged up with them. If I engage the, the Asmatas, the trader union of the entire Enugu state, the Asmatas in the entire Enugu state, I've engaged the entire market in Enugu state. So you don't expect me to begin to go to shop one by one. No, I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> l l let me tell you what it's like. It, yes. it, it's like if you say now that Nigeria is, in the next two days, we don't know what's going to happen. The mm. protests, well, it could be successful in some area, mm. will not. Mm. Is I assume that our representatives may have spoken for us, whether they are members of the House of Reps or House of Assembly, mm -hmm. because we elected them to represent us. But yes. people are saying, no, they may have agreed that this is what it should be. Mm -hmm. So it's possible you've engaged the leaders, mm -hmm. and leaders may not have delivered this concept they well did. to the people. They did well, as we, as we will see as we, <laughs> in this conversation. <laughs> You see that it may not be uh, Uhuru. No, they did. The only that, uh, you know, when it comes to payment, <laughs> when it comes to bringing out money. That's where the issue for is. For an average Igbo man, no matter the level of engagement, no matter the level of agreement, and it ends up in you bringing out the money, it's like a coughing out blood in the, in the, in the body system of an Igbo man. Okay. Uh, um, so okay, let me now ask you, what's the relationship, if any, between these revenue collections and economic development? Beautiful. You see... I've said this time and over again that um, any organization, not just government, that cannot assure the revenue sustainability, that organization has no going concern. Okay. In, in, in part of this world, what has actually made us to look as if to say we are not developing it because we have not assured our revenue sustainability all over the world tax is the is the, the the engine that fuels development no part of the world can claim to have developed by waiting for donor agencies or by loan so you have to first of all sustain your revenue the, the truth of the matter is that Enugu, as a city, has a massive potential for revenue. You may doubt it. Any other person may also come to say, it's not true. But as the time goes on, we begin to unfold it and let people know that Enugu has massive potential beyond the understanding. Because we've seen our economy as some people have challenged people who say Enugu state is a civil service state. I say no. Enugu is never a civil service state. Enugu is a business environment. Okay. Um, one of the things they say out there is that I don't know how true it is, but thank God you are here. Mm. That you are running a unitary or unified revenue collection in the state. That you've taken the revenue uh, collection potentials of local governments. I don't know how true that is. Um, they say they may ask not to collect certain 
revenue. So tell me. Yes. Uh, we why are is we, that so? Why we are is that um, the government has declared to support businesses. And in accordance with the, the tax policy of the Federation that 2017, there is the tax policy is geared towards unifying tax collection. So the governor is a businessman. He has suffered the, the, the challenges of multiple tax collection from different levels of government. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like use of that. We'll, we'll come to that shortly. Business. <laughs> so he, he, he prefers that we unify tax collection and revenue collection. And um, to ensure that the business does not receive too many footfalls of revenue collectors coming into the business. Because some will mm -hmm. come like an evangelist, the mm -hmm. end of collecting money. Some will come like a, like a aburu and they say collect money. Some will come in different form. How do we unify this collection? So what we did was introduce the etiquette. That etiquette unified state collection and the local government collection. So, but those who tell you that we've uh, uh, unified it, and they may be telling you are the negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're in the unitary yes, that revenue it. collection. And uh, they may be telling you, maybe to tell you that, but I don't think the, 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 the players, the local government players, key players maybe, or stakeholders will be able to tell you this. But I will explain it here for us to know what we are doing. When we come to the market, the, the, the local government used to go to the market to collect some revenue. A batra, a yeah, lot of things. So when mm, we do go yeah. there to collect. So state also go there to collect a summer, business premise, tax. And we said, no, unify them. Local government, what are you collecting? Let's bring it together. A summer, what is it? Here? Bring it together. Business premise, bring it together. Tax. Can we go into presumptive tax? Yes. Bring it together. So you brought all this in together and we dispense them as one one revenue. So how how do you share the from how do you share the revenue? And everybody knows their own. I'm not asking how. Knowing is one thing, sharing is another. No, we don't share to anybody. Okay, so what do you do with it? The technology we use, you know, technology is an enabler. Every night, whatever is collected. There is what we call a split. The local government gets their own. That night is not tomorrow. Every other agency that is self-sustaining, that is in that, that bucket, gets that, that night. I'm not talking about tomorrow, that night. Danger of a single story. I don't go into, <laughs> into doing reconciliation. So every uh, no local government that is involved in this tells you that I have not seen our money. But one local government say, I want to know how much you have collected for you. Say, look at what you have collected for you. Check your bank statement. Look at the date of payment one by one. Let, go into it and let me know. I don't go into reconciliation. This technology pays as it is. So that is why I say sometimes, People who are telling you this may be telling you to woo sentiment. I get it. But this is actually what we do. I'm, I'm not sure for fear of reprisal that either former or mm. uh, those who are holding brief for local government mm. would want to courageously appear on this program to speak to the points you've raised. Uh, again, you know how they play in the local government. Mm. And so I, I easily talk with them about what are their challenges. Of course. And one of those would be um, th they're not seeing their revenue. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> now, but l let me also add okay. uh, um, when you unify revenue collection and by your technology you dispense, mm. you've taken a vital aspect, quote unquote, of the autonomy of the local government. Because that is the issue in Nigeria as of today. I recall once I created an interview to a, a medium and asked me, I said I was chairman for four years. 
we, I was able to buy a tractor, tractors, I was able to buy dozers, I was able to buy rollers, I was able to buy um, ambulances. The first state local government partnership on road construction, running from Akpasha to Lokwanta, was started by my local government and then state government. Okay. It was the first time, and because we had complete unbetted access to our funds, and we collected whatever, nobody needed to tell us what to do. If at my age I was a local government chairman, and I assume my level of intellect is limited, that I needed to be told what to do. Then, but that's a story for another. Like no, I said, now so this let, issue let correct an impression. It's better correct just, it just because it's, me, it's common in it's me, common me, in, it's common in the open no, space. No, no, no. It is, it is the people making this allegation are also your colleagues. No, not local who, my colleagues. Who, who left local government and also hold on to local government revenue. <laughs> That's an accusation. I have to say it here openly. <laughs> that's an accusation. Because I know, I know the little bit of it. <laughs> okay. So that's why you are uh, here. They felt uh, what they are holding on to has been taken away from them. And so I, I, you, you are closer <laughs> to them. They will go. They will continue to make this kind of uh, allegation. But none of the local government is complaining because they are, they are better off. Again, in the state, the government of uh, Barista Peter Ndubisimba don't care and don't touch local government allocation it goes to them directly you can go and engage in the local government now we don't have chairman we have uh, hpms as holding brief for chairman go and ask them i get it but i'm not saying you should go and demand for your your own <laughs> your uh, uh, no 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 again you said the man the issue of uh, people, the, man. the issue of the, people the, saying, the truth is like, like i said the uh, truth let is me that also say that the issue of people saying unification yes unification has been part and parcel of our culture the money you see the state go to federation account to share what do you think happens there is unification of revenue collection because the federal inland revenue service was to uh, was asked to collect company income tax on behalf of everybody but the sharing is transparent and they, no, no, no no it's published you no, see listen. it what you they, what they, you what the state gets in the month i will no, know listen. what goes to local government i will know how do you what do you mean by transfer at, at least it's published what is published <laughs> okay our own is that you don't even need anybody to publish for you you have it coming every every day i get you have it coming every day if you want statement you print it from your own end you have access to the portal nobody is restricted for seeing it this one is even they bring out a formula this one there's no formula the formula is that what you are supposed to collect is 5500 that 5500 comes to you does it go to the joint local government account for what or does it go to the it goes to the local government account directly then, then something is wrong. Because, I don't. Because, nothing is wrong. I've told you we are the we are so all this. Uh, you are in the air conditioned <laughs> office. You are not. You are not on the street. You are not on the street. So you may not really know what information people peddle about. I I tell you where the information is coming from, and I know where it's coming from, because you know I'm the one involved here, yeah. and I know the level of engagement, level of um, distraction, and level of challenges you get from those people who left the local government hold on held on to the local government revenue i get you okay so but it's not it's not a problem mm? okay um, our books are are open for anybody yeah i've got that the freedom of information yes, uh, anybody can so come i and, uh, i i i could i could invoke it of course <laughs> i could invoke it to have you don't um, even need to come to me for you to get, get well I'm, 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 I'm happy you're saying this yes. and, and that is why we have this platform to have these conversations Look, Okay, I because need, I need to do my work yes. and go home and sleep. Okay. I'm happy need, hearing this. Yeah, I don't need to do my work and every day people are calling calling me to come come and answer questions. I don't do that. So is everybody should have access to their revenue. Yeah. But what you, what we don't want is too many footfalls into businesses. Well, um let's move on. Do you do you still use tax collectors? no we don't use tax collectors no we don't recall I, I gave you a call two days ago yes we don't use tax. i will tell you what we are doing yes um what uh, we are doing let, let me let me explain what that yes. scenario so yes. that you can take it holistically um a certain trade 
young men in one unmarked bus mm. were driving around Transekulu mm. claiming they are agents of uh, internal revenue. Mm. And so they were they were on a POS operator mm. asking her to pay 18,000 naira. Okay. And I saw them, so I, I, I moved around. They saw a press. Mm. The man came to talk to me. I said, the government I know, the government of Peter Mbai know, mm. with the chairman, Namani, mm. can ask you to collect cash from anybody. Beautiful. He said, no, that if you pay somewhere, 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 the government told you, ask them to come tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And I looked at them. They peddled your name and the name of your board. Mm. Okay, it's mm. dangerous mm. because for the unsuspecting public, mm. they will believe it is true. They left. Okay. I was told today that they came asking the, the person said, But you said there should be a, that we spoke to the chairman, he said there should be a government account. Yes, that 18,000 is huge amount that we'll pay to anybody by okay. cash. Yeah. That you've asked me that if I say anybody like that, you should be arrested, of course. So, who are these people? These are non state <laughs> actors. So, how are you dealing with them? Oh, we are dealing with them on daily basis. We are arresting them on daily basis. We are dealing with them. You know, you must have an emergency number. There, there is. We okay. have. There is uh, this issue whereby people who felt, you know, when we came on board, these non state actors, we are, we are the one collecting revenue. Okay. But we are collecting into their personal pockets. So we came and Okay, in order not to create a, a state of um, uh, chaos, if you push all of them away and uh, they will go back into the streets and begin to cause problems, can we train them and uh, reintegrate them into our revenue collection and make them an agent? So that agent, we converted them into. Uh, the agent is not removed from us. It is uh, assumed to be our our own um, staff. So, but we give them the tag, we give them ID card, we give them vest, and we train them, and we made them to have a, a smartphone. Then they started collecting money. So when they started collecting, they would collect cash, they would vend. So some people, because Igbo people are smart, they saw that uh, when they collect this cash. Even if they don't vend, the person there may not know they've not vended. So we stopped cash collection. Okay, very good. So when we stopped cash collection, we, we produce an account called ESNG e ticket account slash the agent number. So you pay into that account. At least the person who paid you has an element of evidence. Then you now go and then the person will get a lot. We don't have receipt anywhere in the pharmacy sector. No receipt anywhere. I've been getting this, uh, hey, my why don't you have receipt? You know, there's evolution in everything. So we don't have receipt anywhere. If you pay, you get a lot. That's good. So if you want to verify, you die star A011 star 042 hash. You confirm if it has been paid or not. Is an innovation. So part of disru disruptive uh, yeah, innovations that's that what we do. talked about. So we don't have a, any vehicle in internal revenue that is not branded. That's another revelation. Yes, every of our our vehicle are branded. You will see it boldly written with our 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 logo. So when you see one that is not branded, if you see one that is not branded, who are there? Get them. Just hold them on. Call any of the of the police number or our distress uh, number we'll, we'll get these people okay um again i want you to hold your thought we'll just go on a short break when we come back i like this conversation of these uh, branded and unbranded vehicles mm. because there are a lot of unbranded vehicles in town say they are their agents <laughs> <laughs> so don't go anywhere we'll back shortly
Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, you are still watching on Common Conversations, and uh, we are still on Signature Television. And my guest is still Emmanuel Ekenenamane, executive chairman of our Tenor Revenue Board. Let me ask you, political interference. In the past, it used to be one of the challenges that any chairman would have faced. Did you get phone calls from politicians asking you, chairman, do this, do that. How much of political interference do you have? I don't have any. None? I don't have any. Oh, that's good to know. Let's talk about your recruitment pattern. Are there favoritism in the recruitment or was it an equal opportunity employer? How do you recruit your staff? Well, you know, who, 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 who have you now trained to be e compliant? You know, now, when, you know, when we started recruiting this uh, e ticket agents, people doubted that we, uh, we are not going to, that is, it will not work. It had been tried before, it never worked. So, why, why gain going, going there to say you're recruiting? We advertise, we will beg people. We started even going when you are going, going, we started behaving like mad people. We are on the road, we just going across, we say, oh, Can't you do this work? We'll be begging people, Can't you do this work? Come now, we'll teach you how to do this work. So we we'll say, To go and carry phone, I'll be going around. You okay, didn't talk to me. You believe that I'm one of the agents. So, <laughs> when we found some people, we started. Those people started making money because for every of this money they collect, we pay them a certain percentage. Okay. So, so some started making money. Ah, then we started having rush. You might give me. You might give me. I said, okay, I don't have issue. Uh, the person who is the head of e ticket. Can who who where and where do we have space? He said, Ima we have space everywhere. Obit is not yet complete. Uh, new market is not complete. Artisan market is not complete. Can we get more? And we begin to uh, we say going back to advert again, people may think that uh, they rejected this government. I get it. Yeah. Let's use word of mouth marketing. Let's begin to look what are the most effective uh, yes. Let's begin to talk to people. Let's begin to encourage them to come. Let's go to those areas where you see people sit down and drink. Let's go to Guago. Let's go to Biago. Let's go to Geneva. Let's go there and begin to see people drinking. Let's begin to talk to them and say, you can do this. So we started talking to them. We started getting the numbers. So when we got them, we started training them using Nest Zone, which is also one of the big consulting firms in the country. We started training them. So when we are training them, now started calling, talking about enforcers who will ensure that these people uh, uh, comply to this payment. Well, now we got people who call enforcers. So the enforcers, please uh, wait. Road safety, come. Come and train them. Come and tell them what they need to be, to do. As you mean, they're enforcing the e-ticket on the transport sector. How would they observe the, the traffic and see do the enforcement? The road safety came, trained them one, two, three. I get it. We now yes. call people who believe they are also experts in this field and say, come, come and train them. So this is what we are doing. After some time, we begin to reject it. In that e-ticket ecosystem, we have over 1,500 people working within that ecosystem. That level of employment? Yes. So when people begin to ask, why is Enugu peaceful? Enugu is peaceful that because those people who would have caused mayhem on society are busy making money. A lot of people do not know this. <laughs> and that's why you guys should, shouldn't keep quiet. This. A lot of people do yes. not know what you're just saying now. That's what we're doing. Then, the governor, is a Wakahali governor, he came and, and bulldozed all the streets. Who are those working on, on those uh, construction sites? People of Enugu. Who are those working on bridge construction, culverts? People of Enugu. Who are those installing the CCT cameras? People of Enugu. You may not be so, so, so skilled in the, in the technology they're using. But at least you can climb the, you can help dig, dig yes. the... Use the ladder. Use the ladder, fix, one of fix it, things. carry the pole and put. Yes. You can even mix uh, concrete. Is it not? Yes. So people are busy everywhere. 
who are those constructing the, the international conferences? The people of Enugu. The people doing the ties, the people doing the painting. And then you find the petty uh, yes. restaurateurs oh, no, no. Ar around there supplying food and water and I, all that. Somebody who used to cook at Obwe time couldn't finish his uh, his uh, sales. So we'll come to International Conference Center and begin to sell there. And people are busy. That is actually how to rejig economy. You don't rejig economy by praying. You don't rejig economy by shouting. You don't rejig economy by speaking grammar. You reduce the economy by engaging in activities that get people busy. Because I'm, go I'm going to ask you, um, because our time is ticking, uh, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Uh, it may not be that simple, but of course, in the performance of these duties, and knowing that you took our revenue from 2.3, 2.4 to 5 billion now monthly, like I said before, it's a quantum leap, you must have faced some challenges. It is not all smooth as you are saying. Yeah, it's not at all. So, can you just share a bit of it? And how did you deal with the challenges? Oh my God! As as Those you can. challenges you can't even finish it. You can't. Yeah, I know. I know, I know they must be there. You can't. No yeah. matter how you try, you can't. Let me just say you the, the 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 challenges you have is not actually the challenges of the the outsiders. You also have massive challenges of internal. people, internal people, internal sabotage, even within your office. Who are telling you, Oga, this is not how we used to do Good. it before. Don't know there's a change. No, don't no people nobody believe in those changes. They will just say this is not how we use it to do it before. I've been here for twenty years. Why are you changing <laughs> it? Are you getting me? Yes. So when you stop contract, a word of contract for revenue, somebody comes to pay two million naira, goes into the field to collect two hundred million, say no, no no, please don't enter there again. No, somebody will come and tell you, Who are you to say that? I signed this contract. You can't do that. I said, no, no, no. We, we have gone past this stage of awarding contract for revenue collection. The person can be our agent. He collects, and um, we pay percentage on what he has collected. I get it. But not give him a contract. He pays two million, goes to the field, collect two hundred million. We cannot do that. So these are some of the challenges. So how do you survive the cabal or the cartel? <laughs> no, I did not. I, it's not that I survived. <laughs> Everything is about the political will of the governor. Okay, and I'll get that. Anywhere you see all these kind of challenges, uh, people coming to bring in their way, it's just about the political will of the governor. But you know that the governor of the state is, is, is so determined to assure revenue sustainability for any state. And that is, that is, that is our saving grace. People may tell you that we are very stubborn, we don't hear. No, 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 it has nothing to do with stubbornness. But the willingness of the government to make money, sustainable revenue for the state, that is everything that has, that has helped us. But those challenges are not ending, I hope you know. They are not. Because even, even uh, some of the community leaders see hill swells in the village. We, we are collecting to 209 the villages, the village market on market days. When you go there, some will begin to call everybody they know in the state. This, why should they come and collect this money from the poor women? I said, okay, let's go. Let's go to that market. You go to that market. You see that the village leaders are busy collecting money. That in the same market, they say that the, the, the women are very poor. Okay, you, know, you, know, you know, you just brought a sore point. I, I, was, I was going to, and that part of... Um, one of the biggest issues that somebody raised with me when he saw the, your flyer. Yes. He talked about uh, what he called, quote and unquote, unfriendly taxation in the United States. He said, you will not go to the village, villages and collect money from them. And he gave an example, the woman selling pineapple in my village. He said, the road to that place, I don't know whether you looked at the road you took when you are going to the place. You looked at whether they have electricity in the place you are going to collect the money. And so they are struggling to make a living, and you are now asking them to pay 200 when services that's ordinary that you should make it a lot easier for them. You said, for example, in developed climes, that taxation was a normal thing. Yes, because every social service they needed to get already in place. If you, you, you hardly find them still struggling they, they, with untied road and I, all that. You no, know, I don't want people to go into that sentiment. The question is I mean, if, I just, uh, if you continue to allow it to, to remain the way they are. And fail so to what services do they get to collect money? What services do they no, get wait, for the, if for you, the money if you collect? Fail to collect money. Yes. And you leave them the way they are. How would the place be developed? 
You need to. Have you made them a they, promise? They, what they, you are going to use the money no, to do? See, it's not about making promise. The blind are seeing what is happening in those villages. That village where you see that you say the, the road is on the travel. One of the groups in that school. Listen, what is, what happened in that school? There is a, a small school going on in that village. Where is the money coming from? There is a tier two hospital going on in that village. Where is the money coming from? Not all villages, sir. Tell me one, one village that where it's not going on. Oh. Then, this, this, if it's not going on in that village, it's coming. Then, there is also a plan to not come. Let, let, let me give you an example. There's also plan to connect all the villages. Let me give you an example. In terms of food. Let me give you an example. Mm. I come from Ogo. Mm. And there's a word called Anikena Lugwem Award. Mm. Then went to Ogunta. It's almost 15 kilometers to Gweme. Okay. It's one word. Good. Now we have Unkwe, you have Ezere. Mm -hmm. They may be about 10 kilometers away from these other communities. Good. One is closer to Uji River. One is closer to Lokwanta. Good. If you build a smart school mm. in, Lok, in, in Ugweme, mm. the man in um, Nengwenta and Ogunta will never see it. Because it's almost 20 kilometers away from them. That is, that is, that is something I will tell you. It has a solution. Tell me. The solution is that if, assuming we, we build at Nenwenta and the Kwe people cannot come to Nenwenta, then there's somebody should present a case, make it to the, to the uh, uh, suburb. They will go there, see the terrain, and they again present a proposal to the governor to approve another matter. Do you know this matter has been present? I, I hope uh, Anyama will be listening to us. When he appeared on my, on my program, not this one, with Mwobodo, uh, um, yes. Obu yes. This matter came to the fore, and they said that is the point they want to take to the governor. Because, because sometimes um, very good policies may not take into consideration uh, uh, local contiguity. So you find that place. You come to my own ward, Amole Ubo Owele Ubu ward, very big communities. So now we're having this mass school in Owele. My town is almost seven kilometers to Owele. And, and Ogugu is almost more than six kilometers to away to where it is sighted. No, you can always make a case. My people made a case. I, I like this what you're My saying. My people made a okay, case. Okay, so you had a similar thing in yes, your place. Yes, now. In uh, Amechi do and Oluku, they are the same word. Okay. But Oluku had had a challenge of survival over years. And again, they are also a bit far for Amechi do. A small school was approved for Amechi do. This, this city, this town that had have challenges of survival over over two decades, do you still allow them to continue to find it difficult coming to Amitid for the smart school? Governor said no. Governor approved another smart school for Uruku. Do you know, do you know what you've done now? You have switched a lot of people's feelings. I'm telling you this, there are many words. I'll give you an example. Marco, good word in my place. If you know the distance between maybe where the smart school and where the other Apart one is from distance people didn't know the smart school also has a policy that after a certain number of student intake that smart school has to be separated and that smart school has to be built there's a policy the handlers of government or governor's information management should take this down to the people i'm, I'm telling you I'm, I'm 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 being very honest it's causing some great disaffection and what these are on these are unspoken affection that people may never know but i thank god that you are here today and you, you are you you disabused them and you just told me the example in your own area yeah. so it's doable it's doable okay um uh, let me ask you five billion monthly is that where you want to be no not at all so where do you want to be where i want to be is 21 billion so what is holding you <laughs> what, what is holding me is, is, is um ramping up some of our strategies currently like in our transport sector uh, informal sector task collection we have not we are we are just moving a step the way we are moving we have a lot of fight back in the villages like some of the villages are not allowing collection in kk collection in okada i get you yes. so it requires going for enforcement where all this enforcement, our people need to buy into it. It's not all just enforcement because we have more than 1,500 mm -hmm. within the ecosystem. So asking us to employ more, uh, is, it, it may be going beyond our capacity. And again, we have also advertised for jobs, which we have started the recruitment because we need to inject new blood into the, into the internal revenue service. We'll get there. 
we will surely get there. Then the issue of um, of capital gain tax, where people don't come to land to register their land for us to collect the land discharge, we need to go and meet them where they are building the houses. Yeah, because it's, because they said the, 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 you you when you spoke earlier, you talked about affordable uh, affordability. Yes, they're saying no, the exact of the way that is uh, that's why they are running away from it. Uh, they, no. they, they said to get um, C of O, get um, uh, permission to do all those that is just is. Uh, I don't think it's too exorbitant. It's a, it's a matter of uh, well, if, if you know, matter of buying into what if, if you know, if you know what's happening. But I know if, if you know the current economy. I know, of the country. but I also want to let you know that land is expensive in Enugu. I can't see why someone should buy a land of about hundred million for the rich ones within the city, the metropolis, and we are asked to register it. Probably at ten thousand uh, naira per, per square meter, and you say it's too expensive. Somebody goes to Abopa to buy a plot of land at 30 million naira, and they ask the person to register it at probably 2,000 naira per, kilo, per square meter. You say it's too expensive because you are paying to the government. This this is just the sentiment you have. In I, the I, don't, I don't I don't I don't know where. It, where but it, never mind. Let me tell, let me tell you. I don't know where it went. What happened? Uh, you know, you used to be MD of housing corporation. Yeah, serious. Ninety nine. Okay. Two thousand and one. That's when the Gulf Estate was was started. It was Tuba Junction yes. and the rest. Go back and check the location to those plots. I read the personal memo to the governor. Say governor does not sell land. Governor allocates land. Yes. No. Find somebody who has an allocation paper in golf, and find the amount that was paid for it. I don't know why they have commercialized it, but that's a story for another day. Our time is running. I'm going to ask you perhaps my final question because you really, really, really uh, enlightened me on a few things that have bothered me, and I, I do hope that our uh, viewers uh, will also agree with you. Okay, I want you to give an advice to taxpaying adults in Enugu State and organizations doing business in Enugu State. What they should know. Let people not run with the idea that somebody said, I paid, I, I pay uh, costs for my land in Enugu. And the Kenya is coming to collect another one in my village. <laughs> <laughs> so please talk no, to talk to them. No, people should also know that tax collection, even in the villages, has been thin that we are used to in the past. That there was a bridge uh, between probably 1999 and downward doesn't mean that it has not been there before. Yeah. My dad used to tell me that even at Ude, Ude Jama Mechi that mm. the tax people used to come in there. Even when there was no no bridge, they come with bicycle to come and collect tax in the villages. So if they were able to collect us in the villages in those days, why can't we collect now? And remember that what the government is trying to do is that no place should be regarded as a, as a, a rural area. We want to connect every part of the city with good roads. Remember the governor has a target of 10,000 kilometers of roads. So when every village is, is connected, no place will be regarded as a rural area. What we need to do is live our life. I get it. You may have this is uh, your own where you come from, but everywhere looks looks like a, a, a mini city. So uh, we don't we want to disabuse our mind by saying this is this is village. This no. If somebody in the village you don't you don't pay tax, when will you know that you are now no longer a village that you are supposed to pay tax? When? So we 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 need to have this at the back of our mind. And uh, again, I want to tell them that. Uh, we want to appreciate them or seriously want to appreciate them. The, the buy-in into our tax uh, policy has been quite impressive. We, we want to appreciate them. We can't appreciate them enough. There may be a lot of uh, people not accepting the tax policy, uh, one or two, but I can assure you that the buy-in is massive. That also, I also want to uh, give kudos to the governor of the state who has been able to utilize this money for for the blind to see what he's doing. So the road, the the the, the, the smart schools, smart green schools, the hospital, the uh, bringing back the dead assets like International Conference Center, uh, hotel the build, building, hotel, uh, another five-star hotel within that International Conference Center, bringing up the the, the hotel presidential, the Niger gas is also, there's work going on, the United Pump Police. So all these, uh, in fact, I can't thank him enough. Okay, so um, that, that is a massive support. We need um, to do this. Emmanuel Ekene Namani. Yes, sir. I want to thank you for finding time to explain to our people 
uh, government policies on taxation. Thank you, sir. Uh, a few misconceptions, even held by me, as elected as I think I am, uh, have been cleared by you. I'm sure, even though this is your first time, it will be your last. Yeah, no. Uh, this is no. just the starting of a relationship with Sunday oh, Television. Course. Of course. So thank you. Thank you, sir. And to our viewers, um, thank you for watching and join us same time tomorrow for another interesting edition of Uncommon Conversations. Good evening.